Old School RuneScape has been seeing huge updates containing massive changes. Today and yesterday, Jagex dropped two brand new update posts containing big changes like two brand new money makers in the wilderness. Wilderness, agility course changes, adjustments to Colosseum modifiers, tweaks to the Colosseum drop rates and rewards, along with a massive announcement about Varlamore Part 2, which will be bringing us brand new quests, a new herb lore activity, which will be an even more AFK method to train herb lore and give you a bunch of GP rewards, and a brand new group boss that we can all partake in. It's safe to say that if you play old school RuneScape, you're going to want to know about these updates. Starting out with the brand new Wilderness Hotspot and Moneymaker, Undead Pirates. Jagex begins with saying that today marks the beginning of an epic battle between Undead Pirates and Elder Chaos Druids. Conveniently located entirely within the Chaos Temple between levels 9 and 14 Wilderness. They state that the goal here is to breathe a little life into the level Wilderness, in the hopes that specialized PvP builds like Peers and Zerkers will carve out a space of their own, and lower level players will be able to enjoy PvP without being at the mercy of PKers far more experienced than they are. Jagex says that these Undead Pirates will be dropping consistent loot, making this an incredibly viable moneymaker. So let's go check it out. Let's do a quick sample size. I've got 200 cannonballs, and I'm going to teleport up using my burning amulet to the chaos altar. I do want to mention that this is an unsafe zone in multi-combat, so don't bring anything you're uncomfortable losing. There is certainly an influx of activity here. Oh, and I've been teleblocked immediately by the Elder Chaos Druids, a brand new feature that Jagex just added into the game. There's a lot going on here. I mean, look at all of these NPCs. Elder Chaos Druids plus the pirates themselves. You're also going to need to make sure you have Protect for Magic on at all times when you're here. The loot is looking pretty great though, and I'm getting quite a bit of range experience here. Here's the first PK I've seen, and I've been here for about less than five minutes. Let's escape from this guy pretty quickly and check out the looting bag. 271k in just about five minutes time. Welcome to one of the new ways players will be farming GP on old school RuneScape. But that's not everything that's happened with the Undead Pirates. Jagex mentions that the Amulet of Avarice will note your drops here, making it so you don't have to bank for a very long period of time if you can avoid all the peak errors. There's also three different unique items that the Undead Pirates will be dropping, which include Adamant Seeds, which work exactly like Mithril Seeds, except they'll move you to the east when planting, as opposed to the west, which makes escaping from peak errors much harder along with the Teleport Anchoring Scroll that will make you impervious to the teleport attacks of Elder Chaos Druids and Abyssal Demons, and the Zombie Pirate Keys. These tradable keys are used to open a chest on the Pirate's Grounded Ship, located in a single-way combat zone on the Eastern Shore. Opening the chests acts like a roll on the Pirate's Loot Table, but will double any loot received, including Uniques. But the Undead Pirates are just the start of the big update. The Wilderness Agility Course now makes you GP, and after we talk about that, there's a brand new group boss coming to Old School RuneScape, along with a new viable Herblore training method that completely revolutionizes the skill. Colosseum changes and drop rate changes, Varlamore item changes, more wilderness and PvP changes, and even more changes on top of that. Did you know that there's a few Discord servers that are dedicated on giving GP out? One way players make a lot of GP without necessarily playing a game is by entering giveaways that usually occur on YouTube videos, streams, social media posts, or Discord servers. Here's an example of a giveaway-based Discord server that gives hundreds of millions of GP, if not billions of GP away weekly. Everything they do is completely free to enter, and they also track any Twitch streamers that have giveaway in their title and have a notifier for anyone who's interested in that type of content. I'll leave a link in the description for those of you guys who want to join and have a passive way to make some GP. Today's update adds in an opt-in loot system to the Wilderness Agility course. There's a shiny new dispenser at the entrance of the course. For an upfront fee of 150,000 GP, we can start gaining loot after every completed lap. Simply touch the pillar at the end of the course, and you'll receive loot and an energy top-up. If you get PK'd in the course, you will lose your 150,000 GP deposit. Although unlike how it works in the Revenant Caves, the PKer who PK'd you will not be receiving your 150,000 GP as extra loot. Let's try it out ourselves. What you want to do is pay this dispenser 150. 50k to start gathering loot. Then you simply do the agility course as usual. At the end of each lap, you do get rewarded every time you tag the agility dispenser with a different variety of loot. Wow, okay, so all of the loot automatically goes into your looting bag for you. That's pretty convenient. Well, as we could have expected, a PK.
Always got to watch out for them. An hour logout is a great example of the mechanics of the agility course. Once you log out, you lose your agility lap streak, which is something you don't want to lose because when you build it up, you get extra GP per lap and every single lap you get an agility ticket, which is a brand new way to earn extra experience in the wilderness agility course. Every single ticket you get grants you 200 XP per token, unless you turn in more than 11 of them, with 11 to 50 tokens turned in at once, granting you 5% additional experience, all the way up to if you redeem 101 tokens at once, giving you a whopping 15% experience increase, equaling to 230 experience per token. But that's not all that's happened to the wilderness in PvP. The respawn timers for most NPCs in the wilderness, including bosses, have been reduced to 9 seconds, making them spawn quicker. Jagex has also improved the quantity of the following wilderness tasks. Bandits, Dark Warriors, Rogues, Anku, Hellhounds, Ice Giants, and Jellies. They've allowed multi-cannons to be placed in the middle of the pirate's hideout in the deep wilderness. They've also increased the drops of the following NPCs, Bandits, and High-Level Rogues. They increased the superior Slayer monsters that can spawn during a Wilderness Slayer task by 10%. You can purchase imbued God Caves from Purdue for 250,000 GP. Imp Boxes can no longer be used in PvP worlds. And if you die with an imbued item such as a Berserk Ring imbued that is lost on death, you will now be able to refund either the points or the imbued scroll used to create it. But Jagex did not stop there. Moving us into everything Varlamore and Varlamore Part 2. Jagex starts by saying there are still two parts left in our biggest area expansion ever. And today they want to give us the first look at Varlamore Part 2. With the headline content including a new Herblore activity on Alderan, a new group boss in the mountains, and the continuation of the Varlamore storyline. Bringing us to the Herblore activity. This high level skilling activity is designed for players with 70 plus Herblore. Although lower level players may still be able to join in on the fun. With Jagex mentioning that this isn't going to be a high intensity training method. Which means that they're going to be prioritizing tangible rewards over XP. They then mentioned about a brand new group boss coming to old school RuneScape. The northern mountain range will be home to a multiplayer PVM experience. With the target group size being 3 to 8 players. With loot mechanics working similar to Nex and Scurious. Which will reward multiple players for defeating it. But they say unlike Scurious, they're not targeting players with less PVM experience. They're expecting players that do this type of content to already have or be close to having a fire cape before taking on this boss. Which means this content is aimed at a 90 plus total combat level range. And Jagex plans to give out 2 to 3 unique drops from this boss. Absolutely awesome. And something we can all look forward to for the future of old school RuneScape. But that's not all that's happened in Varlamore. Jagex has added a bunch of Colossan modifiers. Regarding Bees, Doom, Blasphemy, the Doom Scorpion, Manti Mayhem, Myopia, Relentless, and Totemic. There's also new loot rates, which are adjusted according to this graph. And to top it off, Jagex made improvements to Echo Crystals and the Tonal, which are found right here on screen. Another amazing update by Jagex. They're putting in a ton of work this year, and I can't wait to see what comes in the future. Now, one thing I'm very curious about is the Undead Pirates going to be another extremely botted hotspot in the wilderness. I guess only time will tell. But overall, at least Jagex is doing something to make the game a better place. And quickly before you go, I'm going to toss one of you a Bandos chest plate. Just like the video, leave your RuneScape name in the comment section below so I know how to contact you, and be sure to subscribe. I'm sure the guy who attacked me got absolutely startled when he see me in all of this gear.